Welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. Welcome back, everybody. As from last week, you probably already know because you read the title on iTunes or wherever it is that you're accessing this, but this is Patagonia 2. Mm-hmm, the revenge. Yes, and it is coolest stuff on the planet as always. Rachel, take it away. Yeah, let's get down to business, shall we? Um, so today we are heading back to Patagonia, as Matt said so, so eloquently. Um, that wild, remote region of the world, which is shared by Argentina and Chile. Yes, and in northern Patagonia, you're going to find an abundance of lakes. In fact, there's an entire lake district. Here you're going to find lakes, obviously, waterfalls, rivers, and the Andes Mountains. Mm-hmm. Um, there are also volcanoes, especially on the Chilean side. Apparently, uh, from all accounts, northern Patagonia, Chile, is, is very remote and beautiful, uh, full of uh, many of the same natural attractions and wonders that you'll find in um, Patagonia and Argentina. Mm-hmm. Speaking of Chile and Patagonia, one of the most famous attractions has to be the Torres del Paine National Park in, in the southwest. It's a delightful park full of snowy mountain peaks and freezing glacier lakes. Glacier lakes. I love the idea of a glacier lake. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that's just me (laughs) fantasizing about a glacier lake. Anyway, so um, this park is very famous. Like, you will probably recognize this image when you see it. For these um, granite mountain peaks that have been shaped by um, natural forces. And um, they're beautifully picturesque. Um, And that's why people take lots of pictures Mm -hmm. of them. Uh, but these, these peaks that you see are the, the torres in the name. And torre in Spanish means tower. So the rock towers. Mm-hmm. The park is also supposed to be a very good place to hike mm-hmm. or to go horseback riding. Yeah, nice. Which is a nice combination, I it think. It is. Now, if you go a little bit further north, you're going to find Magdalena Island, which is home to lots of penguins. There's a penguin sanctuary there that protects all kinds of penguins. In particular, one special kind of penguin, and I'm probably going to mispronounce this, so don't don't hate me. Um, The Magellanic or Magellanic penguin, and this penguin gets its name from um, famous explorer Ferdinand Magellan, who was in fact the first European explorer of Patagonia. Mm -hmm. So, well named there. Um, And here's an interesting fact about these little guys: these cute little penguins. Uh, So apparently they are sometimes referred to as jackass penguins because the sounds they make are kind of like the braying of a jackass, which is another word for a donkey. Mm -hmm. In perfect contrast with the donkey-sounding sweet little penguins, I give you Tierra del Fuego, or the Land of Fire. This archipelago sits just off the southern tip of South America, and it's separated from the mainland by the Straits of Magellan. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, um, Tierra del Fuego is owned both by Argentina and Chile, although I think in a flip of the Patagonia situation, it's owned more by Chile than by Argentina. Mm-hmm. But it's so far south, and, and because, like Matt said, it's cut off from the mainland, that it's sometimes referred to as the end of the world. Yes. Which is great. So it has a pretty juicy history, which I just read a little bit of, something about... Um, Uh, missionaries and gold and and all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, We can't really get into it too much. We don't have time. But I think it'd make a great episode of um, Stuff You Missed in History Class Mm -hmm. or one of the other podcasts, maybe. Absolutely. Um, But do check that out because it sounds pretty cool. And uh, Tierra del Fuego is a popular spot for cruises. And it's it's said to be a good launching point for explorations to Antarctica Mm -hmm. if you go uh, south towards Antarctica. It has a lot of cool stuff from sheep farms and ski spots to coastal wildlife and fire. (laughs) Lots of fire. Yes. (laughs) So before we go, we have to talk about a little bit more Patagonian wildlife. We did mention the the penguins, Mm -hmm. but um, we've got some more that we would like to point out. Um, So there are all kinds of animals all throughout the region. Some coastal animals, terrestrial animals. You've got Sea lions, you've got penguins, you've got uh, Patagonian puma, Mm -hmm. um, condors, um, and even wild horses that roam around. You know what else you got? What? These curious looking little creatures called huanacos. They're related to llamas and, um, all right, I'll admit it, they're cute. They're cute. Oh, come on, they're so cute. Uh, uh, Yeah, they're cute. They're llama Oh, dear. (laughs) It hurts. It burns. 
so you'll find. <laughs> you know, on a side note, Matt, did, um, there, for some strange reason, there are a lot of uh, a lot of llama farms in Indiana where I'm from. I okay. don't know why, but so I've actually seen my fair share of llamas. What's the other not llama um, thing that's very similar to a llama? Alpaca. Alpaca. Yeah. Nice. So these look very similar to the oh, llamas yeah. that I've seen. Uh, they're also there. You'll find them throughout the region of Patagonia, um, but they're also very common in um, Torres del Paine National Park. Mm-hmm. Okay, people. As always, there is entirely too much cool stuff in Patagonia to cover it all. So put on your spelunking gear, head down the massive knowledge cave that is HowStuffWorks.com, and find some more of that stuff because it's in there. You just gotta find it. You gotta, you gotta dig a little. Make sure you take a headlamp. <laughs> Those are important. And a flashlight. Mm-hmm. I guess the headlamp takes care of that. Yes. I like to be prepared. So. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and there's also um, there's also a fun quiz on Patagonia on the website. Yes, there which, is. Which will help you if you're trying to figure out all the places in Patagonia that you want to visit. There's way more on the website. Mm-hmm. Um, but that wraps it up, except for a little segment we like to call... Viewer Mail! Nice. That was beautiful, Matt. Thanks. Must be because you're in a band that you can do that. Yes. Oh, you're a drummer. So, hmm. what are you trying to nothing, say? Nothing. Nothing. I'm going to read the listener mail now, huh? I have feelings too, Rachel. No, you don't, Matt. No. Anyway, so uh, back to listener mail and the people who do matter, our listeners, our viewers. Sorry. Mm-hmm. See, I got confused myself. It's the same thing. I know. So, viewer, listener mail, whatever. You guys. Um, this one is from Tom. And this one, Tom actually sent this to us in January all the way back. So, Tom, wow. I'm sorry, sorry that it took us forever to get to this, but... We have been trying to, to put this topic together, but unfortunately, uh, we just couldn't get enough images and stuff. But we want to read your email because it sounds like a cool topic. Mm-hmm. So here we go. Um, hey, guys. Love watching slash listening to the coolest stuff on the planet. It got me thinking about the coolest stuff that I've seen. And one thing rose to the top of the list very quickly. Sagiria Rock in Sri Lanka. Um, it's an ancient rock palace slash fortress built on a magma plug on the northern plains of the country. It is simply awe-inspiring for so many reasons. Um, I was there a few years back and tried to capture some of my awe in a letter to my mom, which he did actually attach to this email. And we won't read because it is very long, but thanks for Mm -hmm. that, Tom. It was very cool. Um, And uh, so he said, enjoy reading that and please, please feature it on a podcast. Um, It's just one of those things that more folks should know about. Correct. So folks... You need to go to Sri Lanka. You need to check out Sagiria Rock. Absolutely. Again, just go on the internet, plug it in. You got it. Or travel for real, whatever you want to do. <sighs> and I guess that wraps that wraps us up. I think we're done. Should we, yeah, I think should we're we, done. Should we uh, put this turkey to bed, as as I think Chuck likes to say? Let's put the turkey <laughs> to bed. <laughs> Are you sleeping with turkeys now? Oy. I don't know. Sorry. All right, we love you. And uh, we'll make out maybe sometime next week. (laughs) And uh, we will probably see you next time, I dare say, for more cool stuff. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com. And let us know what you think. Email TravelPodcast at HowStuffWorks.com. Don't forget to check out our other podcasts free on iTunes.